So let's talk now about power requirements. Recall that power is measured in joules per second, which is energy per unit time, or it's also watt, or you may measure it in horsepower, which normally is also called brake horsepower. Power comes from mass flow time the system head or the pump head. Recall that we can calculate mass flow as density times volumetric flow rate. So therefore, the function will be now the power will be function of the system head, which at the same time is the pump head, and the efficiency of our pump, which is right here, and the volumetric flow rate Q. So just to let you remember, I want you to remember this, when you change Q, you change power requirements, okay? So that's important. So we have this curve, pump curve right here. Before showing you, we have 10 bhp, 7 bhp, 5, 2, and so on. bhp is brake horsepower. And this is the line that describes, so if you want to find 4, it will be about here. This is the line number 4. Oops. 4 bhp. As I told you, as flow increases, so as x increases, the power increases. And hopefully it makes sense to you because this is kind of obvious. If you have more volumetric flow rate, means more mass. More mass means more energy requirement. So therefore, the pump requires more power. And as the head decreases, power decreases. And that's also uh, obvious. You have a system which requires 100 joules. And you have a system which requires 1000 joules. Well, you don't need to be a genius to know that the 100 joules per kilogram requires way less than the 1000 uh, joules per kilogram system. Let's do some exercises. How much power is required in horsepower for a pump working at 600 gallons per minute, which is right here? And the head needed is 2,400, so it's something around here. Okay, they give the points. So, first things first, guys, we are working with a 9.5 inch diameter impeller. And we are actually working between 70 and 72% of efficiency. So the pump requirement goes directly between these two guys. Oops. Yeah, this is 400 and this is 600. The half will be, I don't know, maybe here it will be 500. So I would say between 550, between 500 and 550. So let this be 550 horsepower. Now, exercise number two. If the power requirement e of, a, of my pump is 600 bhp, so we are in this line right here. The pump has an impeller diameter of nine and a half, so this is okay. What is the system head and what is the efficiency in this operation? So this is my power line. Oops. Oh, sorry, I actually wanted to, wanted to use ten. I don't know why it changes. Well, but the point is, I want to use a ten and a half inch diameter. Okay. So it's right here, and the only point in which I cross is here, so that's good, I only have one operation point, and it's right here. What is the system head? Let's go to the left, and I find this to be 3200 feet of system head. What is the efficiency in the operation? So it's between 60 and 64, a little bit more into 65, so I would say it's 64%. Okay. This was a free preview. If you want to get full access, go to my incompressible flow course. The link is in the description of the video. You will get all access. Not only that, you get a very straightforward, uh, user-friendly interface. So, for instance, you were analyzing or studying pumps, you have it here. The pump block, then you have the sections. If you were, for example, studying the types of pumps, you can go here. And you have all the classes right here. Not to mention that you also have introduction and conclusion of every one of these. So 
for instance, if you were studying positive displacement pumps, the video is right here. If you were studying positive displacement pumps in rotatory and reciprocal are also included here. Centrifugal pumps, which is a very important topic in this course, you have it right here.